magazine cartoons depicting missionaries or hunters sitting in a huge iron pot, which is surrounded by fierce natives with spears and hungry expressions. Usually, below the cartoon, there's a comment designed to make you laugh. Because in a cartoon, this is a very comical situation. But situations such as this exist in real life, even today. Occasionally, they take place in the business world. This is the story of three business executives who are waiting for the pot to boil. For them, stockholders have become natives, proxies have become spears, and for allowing the security of their campsite to become too lax, they suddenly find themselves the victims of a corporate barbecue. If there were a line under this picture, it would be, it can happen to you. This line would not make you laugh, but it should make you think and act. Because in real life, this is not a very comical situation. Here are top executives of a company which experienced a year of record sales and an unexpected loss of a quarter of a million dollars to thieving employees. How did it happen? Easy. During the year, inadequate records failed to show any inventory shrinkage. But the year-end inventory revealed a sizable shortage, which was traced directly to pilferage. The year began with the introduction of a new, very desirable product and a sly, eye-winking attitude toward pilferage. And now it's ending in embarrassment, stockholders' discontent, shrinkage in company assets, inability to make customer deliveries. Oh, they realized a certain amount of pilferage was taking place, but tossed it off as a routine part of doing business. This executive figured it would cost more to stop the pilferage than to absorb the loss. When pilferage losses exceed the cost of production, that's the time to talk about plant security, figured this executive. They didn't believe their trusted employees would steal. They didn't realize that only trusted employees steal. If an employee isn't trusted, he wouldn't have access to material worth stealing. If he wasn't trusted, he wouldn't be inside the plant. Their company has experienced a severe setback it happens to many companies because industrial pilferage has emerged as one of the most popular crimes in the nation. Prevention, not apprehension, is the answer to pilferage. Prevention is not only the best defense, it's the easiest defense. A shortage of cash is not difficult to detect, to prove the loss, to justify the claim. A shortage of warehouse stock, raw materials, tools and parts is much more difficult to detect. It's even more difficult to prove it was stolen. And without unquestionable proof, the hopes of being reimbursed on a fidelity claim are very, very slim. But sometimes it takes a boot in the profit column to make believers out of, it couldn't happen to me, skeptics. Don't fool yourself. Your employees are stealing from you too right now and every time they get away with it they get more confident more ambitious well how are you gentlemen good to see you can we take your coat nice to see you again i've been expecting you ed how are you fine a little chilly out there today isn't it ed Two years ago, we had a very costly pilferage problem, and it forced us to take a stand. Either allow it to continue and absorb the loss, or do everything possible to curb it. And we elected to prevent it. How has it paid off? If you mean in dollars and cents, it's paid off handsomely. We roughly figure we've already saved 
more than double our initial outlay, including the annual expense for maintaining our security setup. I'm very happy that you requested to visit our security setup. We're quite proud of it. It didn't happen overnight. But when the eight security sets are fully utilized, the pilferage is reduced to a trickle. Perimeter security, P&V control, guards, area security, shipping and receiving, production, internal controls, hiring. Any security system is only as strong as the weakest of these safeguards. But even with these physical safeguards, a security system can fail. The key to its success is metal. It's management's attitude towards security. Here we are, We're profit-minded, uh, we admit it. And because we are, sales, engineering, and production and security are mentioned in the same breath. Unfortunately, Mr. Rollins, in charge of our security department, was called out of town today. I'm sure he would have liked to join us. The first step to pilferage prevention is good perimeter security. And this begins with a fence around the entire working area. A fence that's high enough, strong enough, and in good repair. If there are holes, broken posts, or tunnels, it's no longer effective. Nor is a fence that can be driven up to, or one that has buildings, telephone poles, or trees adjacent to it. A fence with piles of material which can serve as stepladders for employees who will later reclaim their loot is also ineffective. You must remove the stepladders or make the fences higher to discourage this type of theft. For best results, maintain a 20-foot free zone on both sides of the fence, clear of undergrowth which might conceal small items thrown over the fence. Barriers placed along the free zone will prevent employees from driving up to the fence. When buildings serve as part of the perimeter, windows should be covered with screens. In general, if an opening is big enough to get something of value through it, then it should be controlled. Exits directly onto the street should be locked, guarded, or controlled by a supervisor in a nearby work area. Danger spots in perimeter security, such as railroad spurs, sewer lines and streams may require special attention. Don't wait until the boat sails before securing your perimeter. Protective lighting should be utilized wherever possible. Personnel and vehicle control, known as P and V control, is the second safeguard against the would-be pilferer. Unless you're a bird, there are only four ways in and out of our perimeter. Uh, we'd have only one gate if possible, because the fewer perimeter openings, the better for maximum P and B control. Everyone, everything entering the plant site is strictly controlled. We're nosy. We want to know their business, and we want them to stick to their business. Hold it there one minute. Employee parking areas should be outside the perimeter fence. This is part of PNV control. Where limited space necessitates parking inside the perimeter fence, use watchtowers or roving guards to curtail unauthorized shipments. It goes without saying that all visitors, whatever their business, as well as employees, are screened by the gate guards. Employee badges are strictly controlled and distinctive and difficult to alter or counterfeit. They not only have the picture of the employee, but also tell the plant location where he's permitted to be. Hence, a man with no badge has no business inside the plant. A production worker has no business in the warehouse. Hey! Hey! You got a pass? Yeah! Yeah, see it, please? Oh, 
Brother. Employees are requested to leave all parcels, bags, boxes in their cars or check them at the guardhouse. Thank you. If not, there goes several dollars of your property. Our exiting employees undergo regular lunchbox checks, since this is a favorite place to hide small objects. Occasionally, purses are checked. During periodic inspections, discrimination is avoided. If one employee's lunch pail is checked, all pails are checked. This is a must. Guards should watch for suspicious bulges under clothing and in pockets, particularly in winter when heavy clothing is worn. Persons applying for a job, visitors, all strangers should be escorted to their destination by a guard to avoid side trips. An effective package pass system is a must, with all employees understanding its mechanics. One of the most foolproof systems involves making three copies of the pass and having all copies regularly compared at a central point, with all passes containing serial numbers for accurate control. What's got in the bag? Just some old work clothes the department gave me. Well, let's see your package pass. You have a package pass for this. A supervisor regularly checks the system. A specimen signature of authorized package pass signers is kept in the guardhouse for quick comparison. Pass forms are kept under lock and key. With such a system, no package without a pass is allowed to leave the property without examination of its contents. All trucks are thoroughly inspected when entering and leaving. Records are kept, time in, time out, shipping orders, even driver identifications. Does personnel and vehicle mean checking the interior of the truck also? Oh, yes. Many a company has been fleeced by an employee joining forces with a driver to make off with a truck bed full of scrap metal, conduit, material so large and heavy that it might be considered unpilferable. At our north gate, where most of our truck traffic is, we have a truck scale. The incoming truck is weighed when it arrives, and again when it leaves. The guard checks the incoming and outgoing weights against the shipping orders. If the outgoing weight of the truck is over what it should be, a thorough examination of its contents is made right then and there. Perimeter security, personnel and vehicle control, safeguards one and two. The third safeguard is the company security staff, the industrial guard. Good security demands good guards, well selected and trained aware that their job is just as important to the success of the company as the hundreds of employees they must deal with. Guard staffs may be contracted from security agencies or company operated, but they should never be made up of former employees who would put friendship ahead of duty. Periodically, guards should be rotated. A disinterested or careless guard is little better than no guard. Never make guards of men who are physically or mentally unable to do the job. Make sure contracted guards are bondable. 
Don't confuse contracted with meaning trustworthy. In any case, a guard must be the type of man who will follow all company policies and carry out all security procedures. The success of any security system depends upon it. Incidentally, a master key system is well worth the time and effort to establish it. The fourth safeguard is area security. In essence, this deals with everything inside the perimeter, but outside the cover of buildings. And believe me, anything of any value must be inside the perimeter. And even this isn't enough. Raw materials should be kept away from salvage, and scrap should be kept away from waste. Many a ton of scrap or raw material has been mistakenly carried off by salvage men or trash men. When these materials cannot be widely separated, a guard escort should accompany these pickups. Scrap or waste areas have long been exploited by the pilferer, who puts his loot in outgoing waste and later picks it up. Nothing, regardless of how big or how heavy, should be considered unstealable. It isn't. If it's in the open, roving guard should patrol the area. One of the most difficult aspects of preventing employee thefts uh, is, oddly enough, convincing the employee that uh, pilfering is the same as stealing. That being an employee doesn't give them a license to steal from the company. Convincing employees of this is a management responsibility. And so is exploding the old concept of traditional stealing. Hey, put that back here. Hell, son, I've worked here for over 30 years. I helped make those things. Traditional stealing. The idea that taking home a few items now and then is a fringe benefit which is condoned by the company. Sure. Thank you. I'll bring it back to you soon then. Look, I bring tools home all the time. The fact is, mine, they just replace it. Here, have a liar. I got plenty. The idea that every new man is entitled to a full set of tools. That's a good. Hey, have a cigar. Oh, thank you. Hey, here, I'll pick. What'd you have, a girl? Yeah, man. Hey, let me fix you up. It's got some nice stuff there. Sure. The idea that on special occasions, employees are entitled to a little something extra from the company. It is management's responsibility to continually remind employees of its attitude toward pilferage. To make employees aware of what they can expect if they steal. It is also management's responsibility to refrain from pilfering or assigning company workers the job of working on private projects. Even if you own the company, you'll be setting a poor example by cheating, and it most certainly will be adopted by the employees. Well, if you've warmed up a little, let's move on to our fifth pilfering safeguard. Situated at one of the most critical areas in any industrial plant, shipping and receiving. Now this is one half that critical area. This is receiving. Our shipping docks at the other end of the plant. Now come on, there's something I want to show you. Trucks waiting to be loaded or unloaded must be parked away from the freight docks. Near the docks, they could serve as a Trojan horse for merchandise slipped inside. And the horsemen have their parking area too. If a driver is not in the cab of his truck, he should be in the waiting room, no other place. The room is restricted to drivers only. The waiting room serves two purposes. It eliminates plant wandering and souvenir hunting by drivers and restricts drivers from becoming too friendly with employees and perhaps starting a business partnership.
A good dock guard more than earns his keep. He verifies the amount of and type of material received, thus duplicating the duties of the dock foreman, thus doubling security, and his signature is required on all receiving tickets. On shipping and receiving docks, bad work habits breed bad security. Messy piles of discarded cartons offer good camouflage for stolen items. Workers retrieve the goods when the coast is clear. Practice good housekeeping. Bad packaging allows pilferers to get to the contents of cartons without detection. Damaged cartons should be properly resealed or repaired immediately. Slipshot loading of trucks makes for easy theft while en route or at stopping points. Who will notice it missing? Sealing the trailer keeps the load in and pilferers out. Spot trailers correctly to avoid the possibility of goods dropping between dock and tailgate. Handle all freight quickly from the dock. Don't allow backlogs. Remove the temptation offered to this Box Canyon thief. Darkness is a cloak for thieves. Keep the dock well lighted. Here is one of the dungeon areas. This is where the sixth safeguard to pilferage makes its home. In production security, surveillance is all important. For the most part, this is the responsibility of trustworthy supervisory personnel. Indifference or carelessness by supervisors opens the door for large-scale pilferage. Here, as well as in other critical areas, is where electronic surveillance devices, such as closed-circuit television, can become a strong deterrent to stealing. They are centrally monitored by a member of the security staff. crib is well protected and under constant supervision, and only with approved requisitions are tools issued. Allowing employees to use company tools at home is a good policy, since it makes the worker less inclined to steal them. However, a complete written transaction of the loan is imperative. At the end of each shift, it is desirable that all tools be returned to the crib or placed in lockers by the employees and kept under lock and key. This not only reduces pilferage, but discourages careless use and breakage. Constant attention should be given to tool security by the foreman. Management should insist upon it. Tools should be marked for positive identification of ownership. No outer clothing, lunch boxes, or parcels should be permitted in the production area. Nothing but what the worker needs to do the job. He sees his coat again only when he is ready to leave work. The same goes for his lunch bucket after he eats. It is essential for security that lunch and locker rooms are separated from the production area. A warehouse is what every pilferer would rather be on a desert island with. A mountain of easily disposed of goods. Arrange aisles for easy surveillance by supervisory personnel. Attractive items should be kept under lock and key. Also, selling products to employees at discount prices can help discourage pilfering. But don't all these security measures make the employees feel like a prisoner? 
in jail? On the contrary, employees take pride in being a member of an efficient operation, even as you and I do. Oh, they might feel persecuted by our tight security system uh, if they have a guilty conscience. One of the most important security measures is our number seven safeguard. Our internal control system. You might say it removes the temptation to steal. Uh, that it's unfair to expose employees to company assets uh, which are not protected by controls and registers. If employees know that shortages will be promptly noticed, they will be far less inclined to run the risk of pilfering. We eliminate this temptation to steal through the use of the standard cost system. It's nothing new, but it is an extremely effective system for determining if pilferage exists and where the loss, if there is one, is taking place. In essence, the system is this. We predetermine the normal cost of all raw materials, labor, and overhead to develop the standard cost of manufacturing a single unit. Thus, the inputs to inventory can be evaluated on a consistent price basis, and the cost of shipments determined on the same price basis. Moreover, by taking the dollar value of inventory at the beginning of the period, adding the inputs, and subtracting the outputs for shipments, scrap, spoil work, and so forth, we can predetermine what our actual inventory on hand should be at the end of any period. This system, fortified by perpetual quantity records of raw materials and finished products, permits us to spot check our control by periodic physical counts. If the actual cost along any of the steps suddenly varies, becomes out of proportion with the established standard, it warrants an investigation. The standard cost system provides answers to many questions. The kind of management information that pinpoints areas where losses are occurring, thus permitting management to act efficiently to curb losses and enhance profits. Employees steal because they think they can get away with it. The standard cost system, computerized or manual, goes a long way toward eliminating this thought. And here's our final safeguard, where we sort out the bad apples before they get into our barrel. Hey, how about give me a call? Maybe we can call you. Security specialists agree that the best defense against the pilferer is background screening. Okay, sir, uh, I have the name. I'll check our records to see if uh, we have any information on this person. Will you please hold line for a minute? We'll be right back. Our nationwide survey revealed that 70% of those involved in a theft from their employer later became involved in another crime. When an employer is hiring a new person for a position of trust, we feel he is entitled to know the character of the applicant. All right, back up, get your hands up. Get that other hand up first. Back up, get that hand higher up first. All right, now don't get any ideas, fella. It's about calling the police, because I'll be right back. Few security people will disagree with the fact that a major portion of today's industrial pilferage could be avoided if applicants were carefully screened, and this includes credit ratings, anything which indicates instability. Pilferers are dealt with promptly. We feel that management which endures petty thefts without taking corrective steps will generally tolerate larger thefts until the thievery reaches major proportions. Uh, leniency on the part of management may be interpreted as weakness and uh, actually encourage thefts. Well, one thing still bothers me. I'm sure there isn't a management group in the whole country that wouldn't want security such as you have, but how could they justify the huge expense and the disruption of employee morale that it entails? 
The largest, most efficiently run companies in the world have disproved this fallacy. They've kept records of maintenance costs uh, compared with savings. The savings far exceed the costs of a good, sound security system based on the eight safeguards to would-be pilferers. Small companies, which feel they cannot afford such a security system, fail to consider that they are the ones who can least afford pilferage losses, and that it is far easier to install controls in small, compact operations than in a vast maze of buildings spread over tens of acres. If you couldn't afford these losses, or pilferage losses like them, then you have no choice, do you? Well, we'll see you. Bye. Thanks very much. Thank you.